when we return. It's like inviting someone for dinner to your home and you ask them to wash the dishes. How does the minister in charge defend Canada's immigration system? This is really a slap in the face to our reputation as a country that welcomes immigrants. When CTV's W5 continues. In just a moment, online warnings to the world about what really happens in Canada. Have you ever heard of NotCanada.com? We'll be right back. It's said that some of the most mobile workers in the world come to Canada only to find themselves immobilized, unappreciated, and underemployed. It's like inviting someone for dinner to your home and uh, you basically uh, feed them crumbs or worse still, you ask them to wash the dishes. Michael Cole is Ontario's Minister of Citizenship and Immigration. He blames a federal visa system that is out of touch with the reality of the job market. Ontario receives the majority of the professional immigrants that come to Canada and yet when they get here they can't find jobs in their profession. What's wrong? Well the immigration uh, system in Canada is broken. Uh, there's no relationship between the so-called point system or how you get to ca enter Canada and your ability to uh, practice your uh, profession or reach your potential. Th they just don't coincide. The Ontario Minister complains the federal point system gives priority to people with academic credentials, regardless of whether there is work for them. The problem is that we in Ontario may need welders, we need construction workers, we need truck drivers. So the point system doesn't do you any good if you're a truck driver who wants to come to Canada from Romania. Yet if you're a, a PhD from uh, Bucharest, you'll probably get in, but you may not get work. But if you're a truck driver, you get to work immediately here in Ontario. Well, then the point system is not working. Uh, that's an understatement. In countries like China, our reputation as a nation that welcomes immigrants is at stake. There are millions of highly educated, highly skilled workers here, and they are being wooed by many countries, including the United Kingdom, New Zealand, Australia, and Germany. Larry Wang, a Chinese-Canadian lawyer who runs one of China's biggest immigration consultancies in Beijing, worries that in the global competition to attract the best and the brightest, Canada is falling behind. In comparison with uh, five years or ten years ago, and I think uh, in terms of numbers, and the people who are interested in going to Canada is going down for sure. So what's happening? Well, one reason might be that people are starting to find out Canada is no longer the land of milk and honey, at least for professionals. There are some people, uh, Chinese, after they immigrated to Canada, uh, they uh, couldn't find a good job, and then they complain, they tell their friends, and the you know, news spread. The bad news is spreading fast, via the internet, by highly technical immigrants who are plugged into the global marketplace. A recent online article out of New Delhi warns, far from being the Eldorado of repute, for many immigrants, Canada has emerged as a land of unmitigated disaster. From rampant discrimination to hidden booby traps, Indians have been forced into an economic quagmire, having to settle for a dead-end job. And then there's this website, notcanada.com blasting Canada as a land of shattered dreams where careers, finances and lives are destroyed. It lists the top eight reasons not to immigrate to Canada. Number one, no jobs. The negative warnings from disillusioned immigrants posted on the website's forum are shockingly blunt. My Canadian dream turned into a nightmare. The embassies lie to foreigners. Canadians must be proud of having highly skilled immigrants sweeping floors and washing dishes. All of you wanting to migrate, do not do it. 
W5 sat down with Canada's Minister of Citizenship and Immigration, Joe Volpe, to talk about the disconnect between immigrants and the labor market. We've talked to so many immigrants who said, look, we passed the point system and we were led to believe that we would be successful in getting a job here in our field. And then they just hit a brick wall and end up in dead end jobs. I'm one of those who doesn't believe that any job is, leads to a dead end. I think that uh, work actually ennobles the human spirit. Now, that might sound a little bit uh, Pollyannish for you. But well, it's Pollyannish to a guy who's got a Ph.D. and he's, he's driving a cab for flipping burgers. I've got to tell you, have you ever heard of NotCanada.com? It's uh, an website, a website. It's on, it's on here, in fact. And what does it say? NotCanada.com. A land of shattered dreams. This is really a slap in the face to our reputation as a country that welcomes immigrants. I want the most positive remarks regarding Canada and my job as an immigration minister is to be able to fix the system, build capacity, establish the kind of network so that people that we invite into our country to be a part of our society can hit the ground running the way that we would expect everybody to. Is the system broken? The system needs to change. How long will that take? Uh, years? I'd years. like to be able to do it tomorrow. I really would. But every day thousands of immigrants come to Canada with hopes and dreams of finding the job that they thought they would get in Canada only to find it's not available. The characteristic of immigrants uh, that have come to Canada is that whenever there's been a door that's closed another three or four open up and I, I don't mean to be cavalier about that I really don't but I'm just saying to all of those people that they have talents that this country sorely needs and that they shouldn't be discouraged by we're build, while we're building a system to realize those kinds of talents for everybody's benefit. The past generation of immigrants who came to Canada for a new life were prepared to stay and sacrifice for the sake of their children. This generation has choices. Many are not prepared to throw away years of education and experience. If things don't turn around, Eva Jai and her family will go back to China, even if it means losing face. If finally we cannot fulfill our dream, uh, we would rather you know, move back. Hamid Zedin Kalam is still hopeful that one day he will fulfill his dream of being a pharmacist in Canada. He cannot go home a failure. No, I have to. I came here to get my license. I have to get my license. But Hamid has paid a high price for his dream. He's lost his future wife. His fiancée, who is a doctor back in Tehran, had planned to join him. She completely changed her mind. And she said that, well, if the life is there just like that, I prefer to stay here. If you knew, with 2020 hindsight, what would happen to you? Would you have ever done this? To be my, you know, honest with you, no. In Edmonton, Prem and Nessa Premakumaran come right out and say coming to Canada was a big mistake. If Canada had advertised properly and given the truth to say, if you come here, you won't be working in your field. You will have to change your field. You might even have to be toilet clean. I would not even have taken the first step to come here. I would have stayed back there. Prem and Nessa's fight to hold Ottawa accountable has suffered a setback. The federal court judge recently dismissed their claim, saying it is not the role of the courts to order that agencies be set up to assist immigrant workers. These issues have to be settled at the ballot box. But the couple isn't giving up. They've taken their case to the federal court of appeal. And some good news. Nessa has finally landed a job in her field, convincing GFM Environmental Services to take a chance on her foreign experience. Her boss, Jim Human. I thought she was very professional. Um, she certainly had a varied background. She was mature. Um, and we, we certainly thought that she would be a good fit for us. Separately inventoried. Now that you've seen her at work, you think you've scored big? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Hello.
We're going to the new house. <laughs> it's with a heavy heart that Raj Kumar is leaving the country he chose for a job in the States. It's really tough. But it's a chance he has to take. A chance to get back into the engineering profession, to regain his confidence and reclaim his future. He says he owes it to his family, who sacrificed so much for him back in India. And with U.S. experience under his belt, Raj hopes he can one day return to Canada and get a job here. W5 will be right back. And that is W5 for this week. Remember, you can also find us on the internet at w5.ctv.ca, where there's more about our stories. On behalf of all of us at W5, I'm Sandy Ronaldo. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.